start off by saying congratulations on not only Neodome, but having it be a part of South by Southwest. How has this release been for you guys, both building up to it and getting to film this? It's been great. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was it was this kind of thing we just did as a group of friends and uh, out in the desert, not knowing, you know, if it would ever find a home. But now they're talking TV pilot. Now they're trying to get some dough, I guess, and maybe we can make a make make a whole a bunch of episodes of this thing, yeah. which is fun, you know, because there's so much of this stuff is so abstract, and somebody has an idea, and then now maybe now maybe we're now maybe we got wheels. Definitely. And I yeah. love I love futuristic type stories. So this was so cool to watch. But I love that there's a sense of you can survive this if you have tickets. I'm wondering, out of the previous characters that you guys have played, who are two that you think would make it to the Neo Dome together? Together? Yeah. Like a guy, somebody that Nick's played and somebody that I played that would make it to the Neo Dome together? Yeah. Well, I'm not ruling out Lair Bear and Gary right now. Yeah, I mean, Lair you saw this appetizer, this morsel of this thing, but you know, I, you know, we, we might uh, Lair, Lair, don't count them out yet. They they might they might get there. I don't know, Nick. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, look, th that's a dynamic duo. Okay, there's a lot of there's a lot of style there. There's a lot of grease. Um, and there's there's a, they're slippery these two. I mean, you know, things go down a certain way in this pilot, this this teaser. That's not necessarily the 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 end of the road, you might say, for uh, for Larry and Gary. You know what I mean? These two stick like glue. Yeah, yeah they're stuck together. They're set getting there, and nothing's gonna go in their way. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> I don't know. I like the idea of uh, <laughs> I like the idea of. Of, of Mike's minister and Ozark and and, and my murderer and uh and Darkwind somehow like being paired up. Okay. And just uh, I'm just con he's just constantly trying to get this guy to kind of grow and be a better man and maybe Colton's looking for some kind of salvation and Mike's helping him. I feel like that's in some ways what's going on with Larry and Gary, but and maybe Anna Camp's character from Pitch Perfect in the back seat. Yeah. Yeah, Just singing songs the whole way down the road. Maybe singing the three songs. of them. Yeah, the three of them could have like a sing along or something on their way to yeah. the Neo Dome. And then every time I turn around and smile, and she sees my tooth, she just projectile vomits on my face. I think that's. I feel like we could get Anna to do that. Yeah, I think she would enjoy that. Yeah. Yes, but obviously this is a very dynamic um, pilot, as you guys have said. But I'm wondering, as an actor, what was it specifically that drew you to want to take on these roles? Was it the characters or the script? Could you talk more about that? Well, I, there, the, the the big marquee thing for me was to get to work and play around with my friends, who we all came up together, and and now we get to kind of actually go out and and do this. You know, um, that was the most fun thing to me. But also, the characters are like comic book characters to me, and so you know they they're so big and. But but you don't want to ever play them big. You want to always ground it in reality, you know. But um, but uh, yeah, it's just they were like they're like superheroes almost, and it's like a superhero world. It's like it, it's it's a it's a strange place that the Pfeffer brothers have built, and so it was it was great to get to put on those, you know, that kind of costume for a couple of days. Yeah, I mean everything that everything Mike said. Hey, just when it was like I owe Mike and Anna just a lot. They were really there for me when I was at work and. and they're just awesome and we go back a long ways. So I was just happy to get to work with those two. They're so awesome. And then, and then the, but the script reads great. I mean, I just love the rhythm of the script. And for me, this character, I was like, I just saw this really gross, ugly guy. And uh, I was like, Oh, this will be fun. Like, and you know, Mike's, Mike's very right. Any young actors out there, you know, you don't, you don't want to play them big. Um, you know, I I might have done that though. So, um, <laughs> no, you know, but I got I got Larry I got Larry in my head, and I was like, this is a blast. So, uh, you know, and then they were just were nice enough to let me act like a maniac, and uh, and I guess it worked. You can cut around it well enough, so that's good. I will be honest, you did scare me a bit when I first saw you on the screen. I was yeah. I'm prepared for that duo. <laughs> he scared yeah. me when he walked in the room and put that tooth in his face and yeah. they just had that look and I was like oh my god 
what he, what was he about to do? Yeah, but it was great. I mean, it was it was it was perfect. Yeah, it worked out great for you guys. It's something. It's something. I'm glad everyone likes it. I was definitely like, I was definitely like apologizing to Anna um and body i'm like hey i really hope i'm not ruining your 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 you know your your tv pilot here <laughs> thank, thank you for you sure everyone's okay this is okay we're all okay with this i mean it's not something you wear every day but it's definitely something that catches your eye on a pilot <laughs> it's fun and there is specifically a shot that i do want to ask you guys about it's when you first meet anna there's a focus on larry but you're kind of out of focus, Mike. I'm wondering, was there any significance to that shot? Because I personally took it as Larry is very caught into what Anna's saying, while your character, Mike, is still on the edge, kind of blinded by things. Could you guys talk more about that scene and what was going through your heads? Well, that's Bonnie. Bonnie's uh, grown so much as a filmmaker. You know, um, so all of any of that, you have to ask Bonnie to speak to it. Um, you know, we're on the other side and we don't, you know, and I've, I've only seen it once. Uh, Nick hasn't seen it at all yet, I don't think. Really? But, no. uh, but so I, when I first time I watched something, it's hard to kind of, so it's interesting that you point to that. I, I don't remember what, what was, you know, what the, I mean, I know Gary doesn't trust anybody because he's, he's just a jaded, pissed off kind of dude and he doesn't really trust people. And so, you know, you know, and then here's this, pretty woman walking down the street with this power suit on. And I don't think it tracks in his head about where would this person come from? So, you know, he's not, he doesn't trust her. He doesn't trust anybody. And I don't think he should, you know? Yeah. It's a hard situation to be in. Yeah. I think though, like the, the shot you're describing, which is cool. Cause I do remember, I saw like bits of it on Mark's phone when I was out in LA last year and uh, he was showing me little bits. And I think I saw the the shot you're talking about and I remember kind of what, because it's also a really cool still. And I think what it registered to me as from Anna's point of view, and, and again, what Mike was saying, and this is all, you'd have to ask Bonnie and the Pfeffer brothers, because this is their vision. But um, the thing that stands out to me, it's like, she's also about to enter this. The journey's now really getting going for her. I mean, as far as we know, right? I don't know what they'll show before with her character, where it's going, but like how weird and ugly and dark this road may go, you know, like Mike's a handsome guy. He's got a perfectly symmetrical face. You zoom in on that face with that crisp cut, even with his little like boy George earring, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't hit the same level of like, oh, God, what what trail are we about to trek down? And you hone in on on the Larry over here and it'll let you know that it's a squirrely world you're going into. So, yeah. And I love it. Larry is is it. Uh, I, I don't know, Nick, I'm just thinking of this now, but it's like you have this, uh, th there's a fear of your impulsiveness. You know what I mean? You know, there's a fear of like that, that you have an impulsivity or something. Do you know what I'm trying to say? That like, you might not be able to check yourself or something. And yeah. I think that's kind of scary. Yeah. I mean, I think it's like anytime, like we, it's like the fear of, it's like if you're a city person or a regular person and you wind up in some of these areas, it's where like, oh, they don't go over there. That's a bad neighborhood. Or you get down to like, you know what my wife calls like the long trees, you know, it's like you get into the long tree world and, and you start seeing some of these houses and you see the people walking around those houses and you're like, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'm safe right now. And uh, and part of that is that kind of uh, whatever the quality is that's about those people at times and it's just the strangeness and how different it is and maybe how ugly it is to you and whatever your norm is that that's you know you don't know to mike's point you just don't know what's going to happen then like and then those people can, can seemingly go anywhere if you can get your if you can let your mouth get to that point then god knows what you might do uh at a moment's notice you know yeah that's it. we want it to be a bad neighborhood on wheels <laughs> yeah that's right that's right. What was the process like of getting into the characters? Because obviously there's the costumes and there's the script, but what was makeup like for you as Larry? 
Oh, um, well, it's funny because they were sort of like, wait, what are you doing? I was like, hey, I, I want to put this. I think he has a silver tooth. Like, I feel like he has this this fake tooth because I play a lot of like really gross bad guys a lot. And look, I'm a kid from the 90s in America. So I was forced to go to the dentist, which was a good thing. Like, you know, Grace, you have very nice teeth, you know, I have braces. Yeah, yeah, you have nice teeth. They, yeah. they, they took care of your teeth. Good job. You have good dental hygiene, you know, but I play a lot of people where they don't have good dental hygiene. And and so, and I've become aware of that I've seen myself in parts where I'm like, oh, my teeth are too white, you know, my teeth are too straight. And I remember with Larry in particular, I was like, no, 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 no. like this guy, like, I can't, I can't have these teeth as Larry. Like, that's not, uh, that, that's not going to fly. So I, I had this idea about a silver tooth and uh, I showed up and they were like, wait, what do you want to do? And I was like, yeah, I just put the glue in and then bless the, the makeup team. She was really sweet. And you know, me and Mike would kind of eat lunch a lot of days together and I'd have to like clear all this goop off because the the glue would smear and I'd have to clear it off so I could eat. And then this poor woman would have to help me like glue it back in. And then I always have to hold it like with my tongue like here. And so it kind of it made the whole character like get this whole other thing to him, you know. Um. <laughs> Mike, this makes it seem like your job was easy compared to this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it was. It was very easy, you know, and having Nick sitting across from you makes it easy, too, because he's such a good actor. And, you're, you know, you're always as good as the person standing in front of you. So it was uh, we just had fun. We just had fun just trying to crack each other up and also be scary. Yeah. I love how much passion and friendship is put into this. But I'm wondering, do you guys have a most memorable moment from filming this? Well, uh, Nick brought it up in a different interview. I, it ha to me, it would be to, as we were running out of light on the last day of the shoot, and we we're doing a bunch of effects stuff, and uh, the car is not working, and we're like laying in the, in the sand, just looking at each other, like kind of laughing, and uh, uh, and there's like weird uh, desert insects slash scorpions type things that are starting to kind of crawl out and getting you know closer and closer to us. Uh, that was a little existential for a second. Yeah, I don't do well with things like that. So props to you guys. Well, neither do we. I mean, I think both of us were like, you know, like Mike said, we're laughing. Oh, it's fun. We're like laying down. It's, it was also we're in the desert. So it's finally getting cool. You know, the sun's going down. It's starting to get nice. And like, it's, you know, cooling off. I go, oh, this isn't so bad. And then like some, you know, freaky desert monster starts creeping its head up. And you're like, okay, okay. I'm not supposed to be, I'm, yeah. you know, I'm not supposed to lay in here uh but it was just so fun like I, I just you know i really love mike and anna and bonnie and like we you go so far back so and there was a couple of moments where like the light was hitting them really nice and i would just kind of look and you know i'm in my weird zone but i would just kind of take them in and and it was it'd take me back in this weird memory train back to when i would like walk their dog when they'd be out of town or you know i used to be mike's personal trainer way back in the day and and now i'm looking at these guys with the light hitting them and it was just this weird time warp and uh that happened a couple of times i don't remember the specific moment but it was nice you know it's one of those things where like your memory gets jogged and uh and it was just cool it was a nice nice moment a nice full circle moment for your friendship yeah mm -hmm. yeah and um, my last question for you Obviously, there's a lot of ways you could describe this, but if you could pick three words to describe it as a whole, what would they be? Uh, Westworld, Fargo, Lost. Okay. Is it right here on my press thing? <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's right. You, He's right. Do better than that, Nick. What do you got? I got, I got a, uh, well, if we're going to go that route, wait, no, so wait, Gracie, ask me the question again. You said three words? Three words to describe Neodome as a whole. Neodome as a whole. Um, three words. Without just looking at the press kit. <laughs> I, I don't have to, I think, um, ah, man. I think uh, uh, dreams, uh, chaos, and uh dreams chaos and filth i don't know that comes to my mind fair enough but like, I like I, for me it. like i just love like raising arizona meets mad max but he read the press kit and he's right <laughs> the press kit doesn't lie the press kit doesn't lie i'm just a guy talking <laughs> out of butt so you can call it neo dome series yeah yeah, yeah. Neo dome television show that you would really enjoy watching
That's that the new the tagline. Best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations on everything again. And thank you so much for your time. Thank Thanks, you. Gracie. Yeah. And have a great rest of your day. Zook.